Sometimes it's very clear in a photograph what is being portrayed, although the story behind the image is not always apparent. While in this video, we're looking at a mixture of both innocuous and shocking images, all with one thing in common, their sinister backstories. Now, before we begin, we'd like to say a special thank you to this video's sponsor, Established Titles. If you've tuned in to Top 5s before, then you'll know we love to cover creepy, inexplainable mysteries on this channel. Well, today we're bringing you something a little different, but just as intriguing. This video is sponsored by Established Titles, the project that lets you buy a plot of land in Eddleston, Scotland. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. The project is based on the old Scottish custom, where if you own land, you can call yourself a laird, or lord or lady in regular English. Once you buy your plot, you'll get an official certificate with a crest, as well as your unique plot number. Not only can you use this title on your credit card statement or phone bill, but Established Titles also plants a tree with every order, working with charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help reforest our planet. It makes a great last minute gift, especially as Established Titles is running a massive holiday sale right now. Go to establishedtitles.com forward slash top fives and use our code top fives to get an additional 10% off. Plus the first 200 people who purchase a title pack using our link will effectively be next to our own plot, only a few minutes away. Depending on how many of you want to be a lord or lady, we could build our own top fives kingdom in Scotland. So thanks to established titles for sponsoring this video, go get your own plot of land near ours and use our code top fives for an additional 10% off. And now, if you haven't already done so, hit those lights, sit back and enjoy. Happy Mannequin Families On the 17th of March 1953, a broadcast went out across America showing what to expect if a 16 kiloton nuclear explosive was dropped over a major city. The information film was called Operation Doorstop and featured a test facility in the Nevada desert. A purpose-built realistic town was created that included shops, gas stations, several cars and houses made of standard building materials. However, it was what was inside the building that made the test particularly creepy. Full-sized mannequins were strategically placed inside the homes, outbuildings and cars, dressed in various types of clothing to mimic an actual family environment. The bomb was then detonated, and like something out of a horror movie, the devastation caused was shown. The conclusion was that it was possible to survive an atomic bomb blast as long as you had a good fallout shelter or other protection and were fully prepared before the bomb dropped. If this was meant to reassure the public, then we're not sure it did, as unfortunately just a few years after the film was made, larger and larger yield nukes and the H-bomb made the proposition of survival extremely unlikely. Toolkit of Murder Looking at this next photo probably does not conjure up anything too sinister. Gloves, a torch, bin bags, an ice pick, a rope, and a ski mask could easily be equipment used by a hiker or camper, perhaps minus the ski mask. However, there is nothing innocent about this collection of items. This is the murder kit found in the boot of serial killer Theodore Robert Bundy's Volkswagen Beetle after police finally caught up with him. As many of you all know, Ted Bundy kidnapped, raped, and murdered at least 30 young women and girls during the 1970s, although his true victim total is thought to be many more. His crime spree spanned several states in America, making him hard to track down. To lure his victims, Bundy often feigned disability and used his charm and good looks to convince them to carry books or unload objects from his car. Once in his car, he immobilized them by hitting them over the head with a crowbar before taking them to isolated places to murder them and defile their corpses. Bundy was convicted of 20 murders, although he confessed to 30. He died in the electric chair on January 24, 1989. Don't worry, this won't hurt. French neurologist Duchenne de Boulogne pioneered the use of medical photography in his experiments. His work paved the way for photography to be used in medical journals and study materials for students. 
moving away from the pencil illustrations that previously existed. In 1852, he began researching the effect that electric stimulation would have on facial muscles and features. He used five volunteers. However, the person central to all of his experiments was a former shoemaker who suffered slight facial numbness, so didn't feel the pain as keenly as the other volunteers. The neurologist described the shoemaker as old and ugly. Initially, his work did not get much recognition until Charles Darwin used some of his illustrations in his book the expression of the emotions in man and animals. Today, his contribution to the medical photography field is unparalleled. However, some of his work is an eye-opener, and if viewed by a potential patient, would surely put them off having any procedures for life. A gruesome crime scene. Dean Arnold Coral was a heinous American serial killer who between 1970 and 1973 abducted, raped, tortured, and murdered at least 28 teenage boys and young men in Houston and Pasadena, Texas. Two teenage accomplices assisted him, David Owen Brooks and Alma Wayne Henley. The crimes only came to light after Henley fatally shot Coral. The always smiling Coral was known as the Candyman to the local kids in Houston Heights, as he was always handing out sweets made in his family's candy factory. But his smile was a mask, In reality, he was one of the most brutal, calculated serial killers of the 20th century. Coral, along with his two accomplices, lured young men and boys into his car with promise of rides, drugs, and partying. He then tortured, raped, and killed his victims inside rental houses and apartments across Houston. When Henley shot his mentor during an attempted rape on August 8, 1973, police uncovered the chilling crimes. 17-year-old Henley confessed to his role in at least 28 murders and led investigators to unmarked graves throughout the Houston area. This photograph shows investigators digging up some of the 17 corpses buried inside a boat shed in southwest Houston. In the wheelbarrow is the skull of one of the victims. The impact of these horrific crimes continues to be felt today and investigators now believe they may be a 29th victim thanks to a photograph of a previously unidentified boy unearthed in 2011. Versace Steps On July 15, 1997, 50-year-old Giovanni Versace, the Italian founder of the glamorous fashion empire Versace, was up early. He made several calls to Milan, did some work, then walked out of his Ocean Drive mansion and headed to News Cafe to buy a coffee. After exchanging pleasantries with the staff, he picked up some fashion magazines and headed back to his opulent Miami Beach home. As he walked up the marble steps to his front gate, a dark-haired man wearing a baseball cap and a backpack surged up behind him and shot him twice execution-style in the head. He then turned around and casually walked away. This chilling photo, showing a Versace sandal and blood, was leaked to news outlets offering a poignant insight into the tragedy that day. The shooter was 27-year-old Andrew Cunanan, who was already a wanted man, a suspect in four murders in three states. Police began a frantic manhunt for the killer and eventually caught up with him living on a houseboat just three miles away from the murder scene. When the police cornered him, Cunanan shot himself using the same gun used to kill Versace. ectoplasm caught on camera. In the late 19th century, seances were commonplace and even Queen Victoria was known to participate in them. The fascination with contacting the dead spawned several books on how to conduct a seance and what to expect, and one of the things that was allegedly a common occurrence was ectoplasm. This was when the medium would spit out fat slabs of curdled plasma from their mouth, It was believed that this bodily substance was a physical representation of the spirit world coming through from the other side. This photograph claims to have captured the ectoplasm manifesting from the mouth of a medium during a spiritual seance. What do you think? The Fridge of Horrors This photo of an old fridge appears to be storing joints of meat, sauces and other condiments. 
However, looks can be deceiving. This fridge belonged to twisted cannibal murderer Jeffrey Dahmer, who kept a stomach-churning collection of body parts in his cramped apartment in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. When he was arrested in 1991, the full horror of his crimes was uncovered, and investigators found severed heads, barrels of acid used to dissolve human remains, bleached skulls, along with several boxes of bones, and other human organs, that Dama stored with the intention of eating at a later date. In the fridge, you can see portions of flesh wrapped up like meat, along with condiments Dama used to flavor the human flesh. He was responsible for the deaths of at least 17 young men and boys over a 13-year period. He later told police that he murdered his victims because he couldn't bear to see them leave, saying it was better to have them with him dead than to have them leave. Just Married this photo taken on the 10th of August, 1974, shows a newlywed couple posing happily for photos. However, the happy bride had no idea what was to come and who she had just married. Her new husband was none other than the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe. Less than a year after the couple posed for this photo, Sutcliffe, who was a lorry driver, began his murderous reign of terror, preying on vulnerable women in the West Yorkshire and Manchester areas of England. Using a hammer, Sutcliffe bludgeoned his victims from behind, sometimes mutilating their corpses with a knife. He continued killing and evading detection for five years, until he was finally apprehended on January 2nd, 1981, for displaying false number plates on his car. Sutcliffe murdered at least 13 women during his killing spree, while his wife Sonia, who was a teacher, remained completely oblivious that she was married to a serial killer. Sutcliffe was convicted of all 13 murders and sentenced to 20 concurrent sentences of life imprisonment. Despite being found sane at his trial, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and in March 1984 was sent to Broadmoor Hospital under Section 47 of the Mental Health Act. Although the Sutcliffe's later divorced, for many years, Sonia kept in touch with her ex-husband, who died in November 2020 of COVID. After his death, Sonia reportedly held a private funeral for his ashes. House of Horrors This photo shows medical examiner Dr. Amos O'Squire and other police investigators sifting through a basket of human bones found after they were dug up in an abandoned house in Westchester Hills, known as Wisteria Cottage. The bones belonged to 10-year-old Grace Budd who'd been brutally slain by serial killer Albert Fish. Fish lured Grace after answering an advert her 18-year-old brother Edward had placed in a newspaper looking for work. He later visited the Budd family under the pretense of hiring Edward. However, in reality, he planned to tie Edward up, mutilate him, and leave him to bleed to death. But after he paid the family an unexpected second visit, his attention focused on Grace and he convinced her parents to let Grace accompany him to his niece's party. Of course, there was no party, and instead, Fish took Grace to an abandoned house called Wisteria Cottage that he had previously picked out to use for the murder of his next victim, and it was there that he murdered the poor girl. Fish committed at least three child murders from July 1924 to June 1928, although he was suspected of at least two more. He was finally apprehended on December 13th, 1934, and initially confessed to three murders, but later stated that his number of victims was about a hundred. Fish was executed by electric chair on January 16th, 1936, at the age of 65. In addition to the investigation photo, this is a before and after photo of Wisteria Cottage in Irvington, New York. It can also be found on Google Maps. I wonder if the people who live there now know it's grisly past. From Hero to Zero This photograph shows Russell and Mary Williams posing happily outside their home. However, unbeknown to Mary, her husband, a British-born former colonel in the Canadian forces and decorated military pilot, was a murderer, sexual predator and rapist. This outwardly respectable man had once flown Canadian Forces VIP aircraft, 
and his passengers included dignitaries such as Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. In late January 2010, Ontario police uncovered evidence that led them to suspect Williams was involved in the disappearance and death of Jessica Lloyd. Their investigations also linked him to other crimes. After Williams was arrested and questioned, he gave a detailed confession of the sexual assault and murder of Jessica Lloyd, and also the sexual assault and murder of Corporal Mary France Cormier. The subsequent inquiries brought further confessions from him and revealed detailed notes and photographs stored at the home he shared with his wife that indicated that he had broken into at least 82 houses to steal woman and girl's underwear. This behavior later escalated as sexual assaults, rapes, and murders. In 2010, Williams was sentenced to two life sentences for first-degree murder, two tenure sentences for other sexual assaults, two tenure sentences for forcible confinement, and 82 one-year sentences for breaking and entering, all to be served concurrently. He is currently incarcerated at Port Cartier Institution in Quebec, Canada. Williams' spectacular fall from grace has been documented in films and TV shows, and J.K. Rowling has stated that the serial killer in a novel, Troubled Blood, was in part based on Williams. Following his conviction, Williams was stripped of his commission, ranks, and awards by the Governor General, and his uniform, documents, and military equipment were unceremoniously destroyed by the Canadian military. So that's 10 photographs with disturbing backstories. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. We'd like to thank Established Titles for sponsoring this video.